Hi, I'm Render Tom, and this is a long, long, long tutorial for After Effects script comp code. Once you install the script, you can access it via window comp code. I also encourage you installing the comp code demo toolkit package, as it carries along all the uh, project files and assets I'm gonna use in this uh, tutorial. All right, so let's let's dig into this one. Let's generate a composition. Let's generate some animations. Boom! We have this nice-looking animation that was exported with comp code to JavaScript file. Uh, so basically to After Effects script and then packed together to to this toolkit with the comp pack feature. Right. So let's say you want to export this composition to to the to the script. So what do you do? You basically select a composition you want to export. And you simply hit that comp code button and then sit back and relax and watch the magic happen. <laughs> right, so in about 47 seconds we have 3000 and almost 500 lines of code. And this is this is the the script. This is the script that you can run to rebuild that animation. So to demonstrate that I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna not save that, I'm just gonna close that project and do run code. So it basically reads that code from this window and then generates that generates that composition. So as you can see, it's regenerated everything from the code, from the scratch. So you're happy, you wanna save this script, you wanna send it to someone else. Just you know, let's do save code. And let's oh I have already saved one. But let's 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 overwrite it. Let's replace that. Boom. And it's done. Now if I just, you know, to prove that point, I'm just gonna close that composition again and come back to comp code user interface. There's a one button that says run script file. It's uh, basically the same as if you would do file run script file. I just only have this one <coughs> in there so you have less mouth mouse <laughs> so you have less mouth less mouse movements, you know. So I'm simply targeting that JavaScript file. Please select script file. And it executes that file, and we again get that nice looking animation that is ready to go. Right. Also, another good idea to export your composition to a script is that it's at least CS6 compatible. Right now I'm working with After Effects 13.7, this is the latest one, and I'm sure that the user on After Effects CS6 will be able to regenerate our composition, our animation. So that's cool, that's awesomeness. Okay, let's move along, let's take a look at tokens. What's cool about the tokens is that we can automatically prompt for user input once they run the script. And Compo Code accepts three sets of tokens, that's text, file and name. And let's take a look at text prompt for now. So, for instance, in there we have a composition with some text layer in there, there's no animation in it, just a static one. And we have a text layer, so in order to prompt user for custom text once he runs the script, we simply add a text and a column at the beginning of the text layer. Now, once we run comp code, let's select everything in the composition and let's run the comp code. I'll give it a second to think about to generate those graphic elements I have in the composition. And there we go, Automat comp code automatically asks me to enter some new text. I'm gonna say, hi there. And that's our code. And that's our old composition. And during this tutorial, and once you will be using the comp code, you will see that it's generating a new composition right in your project. So that's the way the comp code works. You have the old composition, and then you have the new composition that comp code automatically generates. So in case some bugs appear or something, you can uh, see them live and you know act upon them to something about them. So uh, if you want to go back, like you, you can also you can you can always do undo and you're back to your original to your original composition. And there we go, just you added text and the column and the beginning of text layer. And let's see it in action. Let's let's create a new composition, new project, and let's run code. And once we run the code, it automatically asks me to enter some text. And I see Hello again. Hello again. There we go. And that's it. That's how you use the text token. File token is probably the most uh, powerful one in this toolkit. I mean, it's awesome. We can prompt user to enter uh, image file, image sequence, video file, audio file, 
you name it, you know. Let's see it in action, all right? Uh, I have a composition with a picture, with a still image in there, and I want to use it to enter, uh, to select custom image once it runs the script. So to do that, I'm going to go to the, to reveal layer source and project, and I'm going to apply file token to the footage item. I mean, you select the footage item, you want the user to be able to replace automatically, and you add file and the column. And it reads like file, column, and file name. Right, so in this case, let's let's do our comp code magic. It automatically me it automatically asks me to select another picture. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. And let's see how it's working. Boom. It's almost done, it's almost done, almost done, almost, almost, abba! And it's finished. Right, so this is our old original composition, and this is our new composition. And there we go, comp code automatically imported picture number two and replaced the original one. Now to show you this one in action, I'm gonna simply run code in a fresh project and automatically I get prompted to select, to replace the picture number one. So I'm gonna select picture three, oh, that's a nice guy. And there we go, we have a new composition with a, with a new image in there. So instead of image, you can use, again, you can use video file, you can use audio file, you can use image sequences, you can use any kind of footage item. So there you go, that's the file token. The name token is probably the most easiest one and the most complicated one, depending on where you use it. Uh, before I show you how it works, I'm just gonna hop into the settings window and enable one checkbox. I will explain all of those checkboxes uh, a bit later in the tutorial, so just stick with me, just enable use existing composition. And, uh, for instance, in this composition I have uh, two layers, that, well, I have three layers, but uh, first one is the controller, the node that has a speed slider on that, and then we have speedometer. Not sure how, how to pronounce it correctly in English, but let's say it's speedometer. Right, so if, if I come in and I say name, sorry, name and the column, name, column, and then layer name, and then I run the script, I select that select that layer, run the comp code, it automatically asks me to provide a new name for that layer. So I'm gonna say new speedometer. Give it a second, and there we go, we have, we have two speedometers, let's maybe scale them down, and let me show you uh, if it's a problem or if it's not a problem. But what's happening now? Uh, both of those uh, speedometers have uh, expressions that reads uh, that link that are linked to the speed control uh, null layer. So in this case, speed control. If I change the values, the speed changes on both of them. So that's one side uh, of of name token. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna just do a bunch of undos right here. Right, and instead of, um, now, next thing, instead of adding the name token to the icon, I'm gonna select the speed control and add name to this one, name speed control. And this was, this is a huge, this is, uh, this is complicated one, this is complicated one. Uh, so stick with me, stick with me. Now uh, I'm gonna select two of these layers, now I'm gonna do comp code, it asks for a new speed control, so I'm gonna see new speed record there we go we have this composition now if i just scale those down again let's see 30 doesn't matter and i and i move them separately you, you would see that still the expression doesn't really work first uh, first uh, speed controller is controlling both of those if i change the second one it doesn't work uh, but to be honest, it's it's working. It's working. It's really working. It just doesn't work in current composition. So the thing is, once you do, once you change the names uh, to the layers that are referred in the expressions, you should do your test in clean uh, in the new compositions. So to to, so to demonstrate that, I'm gonna just you know create a new composition, and I'm gonna run the script, run code. Oh yeah, I should create a composition right now. So I'm gonna just go and do that and I'm gonna run the code. Now let's see, let's name it first control. Yeah, we have first control and it's 
controlling controlling the speedometer and I'm gonna do the run code again and I'm gonna name it second controller there we go and I'm gonna just again spread them out to see them in action move guys move 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 move, move. there we go and the first controller uh, we have it controls the speed of first uh, speedometer and the second controller controls the speed of the second controller so keep in mind if you have the uh, if you apply name token to a layer that has that is being referred in expressions you cannot test it in your original project you should uh, do that uh, you should do run tests in a in a new fresh composition in a new fresh project even in a new fresh project so that's it that's how you apply the layer name now let's move on and take a look at item name we can ask user to enter custom name you know for any of these items folder names uh, compositions if you name it solids or precomps or whatnot every and each of them but in this tutorial I'm gonna concentrate on the most complicated one and that's composition composition item name uh, because this composition has again expressions if you didn't have any expressions in that composition you know that would be easier and like I mean totally easier but I'm, I'm, I'm showing you uh, the most uh, complicated one so so let so that's it so uh, in that composition I have a cog control that controls the rotation of these cogs but uh, I'm not uh, uh, this expression is not applied to the to, to these uh, to these layers as you can see there is no expression on those the expressions are happening inside of the of the precomp if i opened it up precomp cog pre precomp cog and then we have that uh, rotation that says uh, composition 232 item name so that's that one and then la the layer cog control and then it reads the angle so that's that's the uh, I mean expression in the pre-composition. Now to show you to show you to show you how to use it, I'm gonna just open up a settings window, disable the last checkbox we have enabled in previous part of the tutorial, and also disable use existing pre-comps. And this is the most important one. Uh, I think I will explain it a bit later uh, how it works, but just stick with me. So just disable those two and save settings. Now, to prompt the user to enter a new name for the item, we simply select an item. In this case, this is our composition. And we type name and the color. Name and the color. Right, so and we run comp code. And it automatically prompts me to enter new composition name. So to reflect that it's a new name, new composition, I'm gonna just, you know, append new, new, append new. And in this case, this will not work. This will not work in current existing, in this current, your, in your original project, it will not work. Well, I'm sorry, but that just doesn't work. Uh, now to demonstrate you that what I'm talking about, this is the, our, our old one. And it's rotating our cogs, that's fine. And then we have a new composition. If I run it, it's not working. And if you come to think about it, uh, well, the it's not working. Why? Why it's not working? It's, it's not working because it still refers to the name, to the old composition, and because the old composition still exists there, you know, it, it's not updated to work with the, the with the new one. So this is it takes uh, maybe some time to process this, like in, in mind. But if you give it a try, you, I think you would understand it, uh, like in a in a minute or two. So uh, in any case, if when you are testing the code, you should always do that in. In fresh, in fresh project. So I'm gonna just create a new project, and I'm gonna run, run code, run code. So let's let's leave the old name. Yeah, maybe let's add old. Uh, all right. So we have old, and let's see. We our cogs are rotating. That's fine. That's what's expected. And now once we run that comp code once again. It asks me again to enter the composition name, so I'm gonna say new, and we have new composition name in there, and that's, and it's working. This one's working. I'm gonna say say it's 30, and I'm select the old one, and it's also working. I'm gonna say it's 10, and if we take a look at what's happening in the project panel, we have those two compositions, in there, new one and old one. Um, also, we have two precomps in there, as you can see. 
uh, well, let me just generate another one, another 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 instance of this, and let's say third, and it will also duplicate the precomp. And again, if you come to think about it, uh, as long as this, uh, I mean, this uh, this controller is referring to to that precomp, and that precomp has an expression that links to particular composition. So in this case, I am forced to to duplicate that uh, composition. So so expressions don't break. So that's why you have to disable use existing compositions. I mean, use existing precomps when you're using name uh, token uh, with a with the expressions on it. Well, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it will just let me know. And let's move on. And the last one is property name. In case you need to ask the user to rename the property, you can always have this option. And by that, I can, I mean, we, we can select any of these properties that can be renamed and prompt the user to enter the custom name for them. So in this case, I'm gonna say, instead of saying my house, I'm gonna say name, column, and then house. Also, let's maybe add a fill effect, just in case, to show that it's working and give it a nice greenish color, and then ask user to rename the fill effect. So in this case, I'm gonna say name, and instead of probably naming fill, I'm gonna say color. Right? For instance, that doesn't really matter. Now, let's go back to the settings. Um, let's enable those again. Save settings and let's run com code. If we run a code, yeah, and you can see it automatically asks me to enter property name. So that's the old one was my house. I'm gonna say it's still my house, Maybe like that. And then it comes to the uh, effect color. I'm gonna say color green. There we go. We have a we have a code for that. And we have a duplicate of that of that house. And if we take a look, we have now it says it's still my house. We have the old one that says my house. And the new one says it's still my house. And the icon house has the name color, and the new one has green. If we run it in a new project, this will ask me to create a new composition first. That's fine. I'm gonna just do that. There we go. I'm gonna run code my house yes color thank you <laughs> yeah so there we go that's the three ways how to use the name token all right let's talk about the settings who doesn't like spending their time in settings window ah i do i do i do i do use existing composition if you want to generate your design in currently active composition then enable this checkbox if you want your design to be generated in a fresh composition, then disable it. Let's see this in action. Alright, save settings, select our icon, and run com code. And as you can see, it gets generated in our currently active project. Currently active composition. There you go. Uh, if we come in and disable this one, and select everything in our project and run com code. It will be generated in a new composition. Just give it a second. <laughs> give it a second, yeah. All right. So that's new composition. That's, I mean, that's old composition and that's new composition. If we run it again, it generates another composition. So there we go. If you want to target the current one, so that's easy. That's uh, I think that's very useful for reusable elements like uh, like icons and stuff like that. You know, uh, as we can you know generate a bunch of them in the same composition. As you can see, it's growing, growing, growing. Right. So that's easy. In case you have precomps in your composition and you want to reuse those each time the user generates the code, come in and enable this checkbox. If you want those to be regenerated each time the user runs the code, then disable it. Easy as that. One thing though, uh, this checkbox only works once it's run from the final code. And by final code, I mean uh, it only works from that generated code. It does not work in current composition, this option. It, does, it, it only works from final code. I mean, 
And for that, for that I'm going to just disable use existing composition. Uh, save settings. Let's give it a second to generate. Boom. Finished. 600 lines of code. Beautiful. And let's run code. There we go. That's our first run. Let's twiddle down the project panel. Let's see what's happening. Now, this is our original composition, and this is our pre-comp. Pre-comp, that's icon project, rebuild project. There we go. Now, well, if I run it again, as you can see, only the main composition was recreated, and the pre-comp left the original one. It wasn't duplicated at all. So, in this case, the, uh, the pre-comps are being reused. Right, so in case if we want to uh, regenerate those each time we run the script. Let's give it a shot and close this down, come code it again. Uh, by default I would definitely have this on, unless you know there are cases when you need to, uh, if you have like expressions or something like, like that, then you would uh, then you would disable that, but, but by default I recommend leaving it on. Right, so let's go, go back to new project, let's run code. It's done, let's open it up. There we go, we have one original project and one pre-comp. We run code once again, we have new project and we have duplicated icon projects, as you can see. So yeah, there we go. All right, let's move on. And the next one is use existing folders. Uh, if we have enabled that, then the folder structure will be reused. If we have that off, then new folder structure will be recreated from scratch. So we've been using this one at the entire tutorial right now, but let's see how it's working if it's off, right? Let's see what's what's happening here. We have this folder structure right now. If I select the, the icon and I run comp code, as you can see, the new project, a uh, new folder hierarchy has been recreated. If I run the script once again, another folder hierarchy. I don't really see any use for that, but in case you in case you need it, you have this option. But by default I would recommend having this one on. And the last step in items panel is nulls, solids and footage items. I'm gonna talk about them at once because they have similar functionality. Right, so if you want to reuse your items uh, from the project panel, and I think you do, then you have those on. If you want to recreate them from scratch, re-import them from a hard drive or whatever, then leave those off. So, for instance, let's have them off, and let's select these items and run compose. And as you can see, we have duplicate, duplicate items, not, not compositions, but we have two pictures, two backgrounds, two nulls. If we run code, Select a composition. Yes, sir. There we go. Run code. Those have been recreated from scratch. Now, if we come back and reuse those and then regenerate the code, as you can see, no duplicates have been created. All, everything was recreated, uh, reused from, from the project panel. Let's say the user comes in and removes the picture too. And all right, so it doesn't exist in the in a, in a project panel. What what's happening? What's happening? Uh, it's happening. Well, if you run a script, it will be recreated. Uh, it will be imported from that location where it's supposed to be. So there we go. If you remove it, it's getting re, re oh come on, it's getting re-imported because it doesn't exist on the in the project panel. Run it again. Run it again. And everything works as expected. In case we have a complicated project and using a lot of uh, tokens like name, file and others that we have discussed earlier in the project uh, and you just want to you know, disable them, you can do so in settings window. But let's for now, let's, let's see how it's working with those tokens. So I'm gonna prompt user to, to enter text and run the code. Please enter new text to see what's up. Say, say what? I'm gonna say nothing, right? And uh, for instance, uh, I want to disable those, you know, for for testing other stuff and 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 whatnot. So in this case, if I just 
come in and disable them from here. Again, I'm doing all, all of them at once as they have similar functionality. And I have and I still have that text prompt in that layer. If I just run that camp code, I do not get any prompt on that. So that prompt is getting uh, ignored. So yeah, so that's but that's basically for testing purposes. If you want to deliver your project with uh, prompts, so you you know you should enable them. Yeah. Okay. In case you are delivering somewhat heavy uh, script uh, that takes some time to generate your design, uh, maybe you want to let the user see what's happening in, in his composition. So enable this open composition in progress. It will open up each composition uh, on which uh, script is currently working. So uh, to show you that in action, well, uh, once I build that code function, I had that option enabled. So now once I run it, you see that uh, each of those compositions are being reopened. And that's, you know, and you saw how those layers were being added into those compositions. So in case you didn't have that, uh, in, in case I had that option off, then it would simply have that final composition opened and you wouldn't see anything in those, you know, you didn't see that progress. So this is kind of a nice feature to have, you know, to enable uh, so the end user can see what's happening uh, uh, in his composition right now on what uh, layer or what property the, the script is working on. You know, so I would recommend to have this one on. All right, so that's it. Let's move on to advanced stuff. All right. These options in advanced stuff doesn't really have any direct effect on the final script. Uh, doesn't matter which ones you will enable or which ones you disable. They, they have no influence for the final script. And these items, prompts and behaviors have a direct impact on the final script. So whatever you have enabled here, the way it will work in final scripts. But I think you already have this in mind as we went through each and every of these options during this tutorial. All right, let's see what use custom function name does. Right, by default, once we, once we run the script, it generates a almost random function name, such as comp code, then we have the date at the, which it was generated, and then we have the time index. In case you want to have this more like a human readable string, then you have this option and just enable this checkbox. Let's save settings. Let's run icon terminal. And we automatically have an option to set the function name. So let's say, uh, uh, let's do terminal. Why not? And once it's finished, as you can see, we have that function name in here that says terminal and function terminal. This one time I had a project that used some uh, pseudo effect applied to the to a layer and I generated a comp code and sent that uh, final script to the client and once he ran that script he got an error that says that oh dude I don't have that some pseudo effect installed on his system and then I had you know like wow man I had a pseudo effect on my layer and I didn't know about it so we have an option for that you know to check to check if if we if, if we if we have any pseudo effects on our on our layer, so we enable this checkbox and we save settings. And if script and if once you run the script and if it and it encounters a pseudo effect, it gives you a prompt saying that you know found a pseudo effect, some pseudo effect, and make sure that uh, you provide some installer for the end user because you know the end user might not have that effect installed on his system. So it's better to be safe, you know, than sorry. So that's where you have that option to be alerted about the pseudo effects. As you already know, uh, comp code is duplicating some items while generating the final script. Uh, but one thing you probably do not know, where it places those items. Well, or, or maybe you do, maybe you do. Uh, but by default, uh, once it duplicates items, let's see my settings, boom, 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 everything is fine. And now if I run if I want to just, you know, do comp code in here, it puts the original, I mean, it, it creates that new composition a, to, you know, to maintain the same folder path. So it puts it into, like, like there, you know? But in case you want to uh, have those duplicates and everything in a separate folder, like that you can see, you know, and delete it, and maybe that's, that's, that's your preference. So uh, you can enable this group comp code items, save settings, and then if you run the script, 
it will create a new composition that says you know com code folder and it will place all the all the I, I, all the items associated with that you know with that with that particular selection to that folder so in this case i had i had you know use existing folders enabled but uh, let's you know let's do let's disable this one and then you see that entire folder uh, hierarchy will be placed in that in that folder as you can see so you know you later can simply come in and just you know remove that from there in case you need to have a quick screenshot of your current composition that you are currently exporting to the script well you can have this option why not just enable save preview frame save settings select what you wanna generate code from and now once you do save code and let's save it as for instance image image script yeah. now once we open up the finder you can see that we have image script png alongside with the image script js6 file so that's a quick way to save a screenshot of your composition and we have two checkboxes left in settings window that's autosave script file and autosave log file the autosave script file option will automatically save the script once the final code is generated and the autosave log file will save the log file if it contains any errors. If it doesn't contain any error, then the log file will not be saved. But for these two features to work, we need to save our project first. So let's save it as, for instance, autosave. That's fine. And just because I know that this project doesn't contain any error, I'm just gonna add a level effect for, on it, like that, and adjust the histogram. Well, that doesn't really matter how I change it, as long as I just change it, that's fine. And let's do com code. Right, so the script is finished, and as you can see, we have save log, and log has one error in it. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about the log file a bit later, so stick with me. But for now, just come back to the finder window, and as you can see, the script file and the log file has been saved to the same location where the uh, original After Effects project was been saved and it has the name of our project and then uh, the name of our composition. Uh, the log file is the text document that contains the list of errors. So in case the comp code encounters some problems while reading or setting values or properties or something like that, it will write that error message into the log file. And there are five types of messages. If you remember earlier in tutorial, we talked about the alert on pseudo effects option in the settings window. And in this case, once the script encounters the layer that uh, contains some pseudo effects on it, it will save that error to the, to the log file. And the log file will look something like that. So it says, your, con your project contains pseudo effects, make sure you provide installer for the end user once shipping the final product. And then we have the composition name, then we have the layer name, and that's the effects property and then this is the name of the pseudo effects so you know just read the log file before you ship the final script and you should be safe and sound and probably the most irritating error is the custom value error well this basically means that uh, com code is not able to work with the levels uh, levels uh, histogram channel or UI saturation master UI value or the curves value as well uh, simply because there's a limitation in After Effects scripting that uh, well, there's si simply no, no way to access these these properties to, to read them or to write them. So 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 that's why the comp code cannot work with these values. But in case you encounter this this such such error, then the comp code will save the log file that will look like that. Let me show you. There you go. We have this log file, and it says custom value errors, we have this uh, composition, then we have the layer name, then we have effects property, and then it lists the, the number of effects that comp code cannot work with. So that's levels, hue, saturation, and curves. In case you still need to use levels or hue saturation, I recommend, to I recommend using something like, for instance, uh, levels individual controls, uh, that's to replace the levels effect or uh, color balance color balance hls 
to replace the hue saturation. In this case, the Comcode will be able to work with it and you will have no problems with it. And the second most irritating error is the influence error. Now to show you what I mean, well, there's a really simple animation to two layers are moving along the composition in a linear way. And they have two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. If we take a look at the top layer, this is the red, red dot, it has the keyframe velocity and the influence is set to 0.01 on both ends. And this keyframe has the same values, 0.01. And the yellow one has the influence of 0.1. And the next keyframe is also 0.1. Yeah, and there's and there is again, there is another After Effects limitation that prevents scripts to write the values of 0.01. The lowest value the script can write is 0.1. So in this case, if we run the comp code, let me just select those. Uh, run the comp code. I will have the log file of four errors. It doesn't mean that I will have error for four keyframes. Well, it basically says that the error is for two keyframes. There you go. Uh, there we go. That says, you know, we have the composition, we have the layer, then we have the property, property. And there we go. That says still the error occurs on the top layer. And it says that, you know, the value at key number 1 was 0 0.01, which is out of range 0 0.1 to 100. So the comp code went and fixed it to 0 0.1, as this is the limitation of the scripting, scripting again. But if you took, uh, took a closer look, there is definitely no, no visual difference between those. And if we just, you know, come in and maybe select those keyframes and check their F-curves, they are identical. The speed of those values are identical. So this is the soft error and you might, you know, as well just ignore it. But I'm just writing that string in the in the log file. You know, again, it's better to be safe than sorry. So in case you check that file and you see that error, be safe, you know, don't worry about it. The out of range error basically means that Comcode is trying to set some value that is out of range, you know, from A to B. And to demonstrate that, I have the solid layer in the composition, and then I have the shape layer, the antenna layer. And the background layer, the solid layer, has the set mat effect, the, and take mat from is set to the you know, icon antenna layer. And as you can see, we have three layers in the composition, and the second one is the background. Well, should I should probably do that, mat layer. And then it refers to the antenna layer. And if I come in and, you know, just build this composition, it will throw an error that says I have the layer number two and it needs to refer to the layer number three. But at that time, uh, once the Comcode sets the uh, set mat effect, the layer number three does not exist yet. So it's not able to set that value. However, I'm catching these errors and I'm collecting them. And uh, at the end of creating entire composition, I'm setting those values again. Again, just to be safe and to check if everything, you know, converted perfectly, I'm just pushing this error to the log file. So you can take a look, you know, in case you need to check this. So there we go. That's our, that's our out of range log file that says, you know, there were out of range values. Fix them at the end of the code. And if I, you know, just opened up the code and went at the bottom of the code, I have the apply out of range values. So there you go. Once the entire composition have been created, then I'm coming back and adding that value for the mat layer, you know, and again, this is all supposed to be work just fine. You can always check. And the unpredicted errors probably are the other errors that I haven't mentioned before. And you know, again, if I knew what those unpredicted errors are, they wouldn't be unpredicted, right? So. I would be prepared for them and I would have fixed them and such. But you know, just in case you encounter some error that I haven't uh, discussed earlier, uh, please do check the, uh, the comp code uh, result against your original design and see if that error, you know, has a major influence on the, on the code. Does it produce the wrong movement? Does it produce wrong colors? Does it produce wrong animation or, or something? You know, if it, uh, 
if the differences are like minimal or you, you, you basically don't see any difference between uh, the comp code result and your original design, then you know, feel free to go ahead and publish your tool. But uh, in case you encounter such things that, you know, kind of breaks the script or the result is definitely something else than, than your original design, then please let me know. Please file the support ticket and I will try to fix it and I will try to make it better and fix that bug. All right, let's move along and let's go to the comp pack feature. Comp pack is additional comp code feature that collects your exported After Effects scripts into one standalone toolkit, such as comp code demo toolkit, as you see right here. And as a note, I just wanted to tell you that before I recorded the series of these tutorials, I had this uh, After Effects project created, and then I went and uh, exported each and every of these compositions to After Effects scripts using the comp code feature. And then I used compact feature and collected all of those scripts to one standalone comp code demo toolkit. All right, so let's dig into the comp pack feature. Well, it's really easy to use comp pack. I'm not really sure why I'm creating this tutorial. <laughs> Anyways, let's take everything from scratch. All right, script name. Define the script name of your toolkit. You know, right here I have comp demo toolkit. I'm, for instance, now let's say this is. Uh, comp pack, why not? And then the script version is 1.0 and as a developer you should enter your name here and I'm the developer and I am render Tom. Awesomeness. And the last thing you should do is basically to point path to folder. And there we go, I have the folder full of exported After Effects scripts from original composition and I have a somewhat difficult, you know, folder structure. But rest assured that uh, the Compaq will respect the folder structure and will recreate the additional, you know, navigation stuff, like there. So I'm gonna just select the entire script folder and I'm gonna say open. And that's the one third of the tutorial is finished. Now, if we wanna add some, you know, additional information like logo or maybe this info button, simply get to the logo tab and let's select the regular image for our logo right there so in this case I'm gonna use the comp code regular image and over image is gonna be the comp code over the over image is, will be shown once the mouse over the logo as you can see it's white and then it's red now the URL link what's happening if I click on the on the logo well in this case it takes me to rendertom.com so I'm gonna just leave it right there, so just render some.com and the orientation of the logo. In this case, if I'm using the, the info button on the right side, I should probably stick the logo on the left. So it's, you know, if you scale and move the, move the toolkit in the interface, so it sticks nicely. Come on, right there. So I'm not gonna just change this one to left and the tooltip. So once you hover the logo, you know, it says visit rendertom.com for more tools. So I'm going to just say come and say hello. Yeah. And that's two thirds of the tutorial finished. Now, if you want to add additional uh, info image button like I have in here, just navigate to info image and select regular image and over image. So regular image is going to be info button regular and for over image I'm going to select the info button over. Oh, just uh, keep in mind that uh, only PNG images are supported. Uh, you cannot use JPEGs or TIFFs or something else. Just use PNG images. And those PNG images, you know, can can be with alpha channel. So that's 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 awesome. Now the, the horizontal or orientation of the info button. So I'm going to stick it to the right. I can stick it to the left so it sticks to the logo in this case, but I prefer to stick it on the right. And as the info button is smaller than the logo, I'm gonna stick it to the top. Easy as that. And in case I wanna use a tooltip on this one, uh, you know, you should enter some information right there. I'm gonna say probably info. Well, just, you know, for demo purposes. And info message, what happens once you click this button? So once you click this button right now, it says comp code, comp pack demo toolkit. And I, I'm really 
lazy to, to type in, so I'm gonna just, you know, copy and paste some stuff. Compact. Compact. Yeah, that's fine. And enter that. And voila, I'm gonna just hit the OK button. And check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Comcode has generated the another additional script for us. So let's give it a shot. Let's create a new composition. Totally new composition. And let's run the code and see what's happening. Give it a second. Boom! Comp pack version one. We have our logo. We have our image. If we click that image, it says comp pack and the text information we enter it in there. We have the uh, respectful folder structure that we have selected those images as you can see and if you run the if you run the the button it will recreate the design check it out that's the original animation we had at the beginning of the tutorial if you remember right so that's it that's how it's easy to create the standalone toolkit with a comp pack feature to deliver our final products, well, we have to do two additional steps. One of those involves saving the script. <laughs> and also just gonna save the code, navigate it probably to compact folder, that's fine. I'm gonna just name it compact like that. I'm just gonna save it to the hard drive. And that's it, I have that script saved. There we go. However, there is one additional step you need to do before you ship the script and that involves exporting your script to binary string. But I promise, this is really easy. This is really easy. And to do that, you should open up the Extend Script Toolkit that comes along with the After Effects installation. You know, uh, we should probably open it like, like that somewhat, you know. And simply do File, Export as Binary. In this case, once we export the script to the binary, let me just quickly do that. I'll give it a second to think about, and there we go, we have compact JSX bin. And once we do that export to the binary, it collects all those external uh, scripts that, you know, we are using in the toolkit, that currently re resides on our hard drive, and collects them into one single file. And this is really important, because if you do not export it to the binary string, uh, your users will not be able to run the toolkit, simply because the original JavaScript file has, you know, uh, the links to the scripts that reside on your hard drive. And once you export them to binary string, it all gets collected into one script. And as you can see, the original one was 34 kilobytes and the JavaScript file is a bit bigger. It's like 4.3 megabytes. But in this case, it's ready to go. You can ship it, you can sell it, and everyone will be happy. Now let's try to open this one up with this option. Let's close those down, for instance. And let's navigate to comp code, comp pack J6 bin. And there we go. That's your final finished comp pack toolkit. All right, thank you guys. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I imagine it took like 50 minutes to get to this point, but you know, uh, going through all those bits and bits of the comp code, all those features, all those settings and everything, you know, it takes time. So I hope you enjoyed this tool. I hope I answered all those questions. Uh, you will not have any troubles using that. And thank you, thank you, thank you once again. And cheers. See you later.